The spider that we are searching for is Antrodiitis unicolor, a species of trapdoor spider that is very rarely found. The last recorded sighting of the spider in the state of Michigan is a decade old. Thus, we decided to try to find and collect one. Now, the spider is not rare by any means. They are actually very common within spots that they occur. But they hide their burrows so extremely well that you can pass by one a thousand times, even looking carefully for them and never see it. They cover their burrow entrance with a set of doors that folds outwards, and then cover the silken doors with substrate around them, making them nearly impossible to see. We headed to an area in which Kai sighted dozens of males last September, which is their mating season, hoping to find some. The only easy part of looking for them is that they open their burrows at night, so if we found the right spot after dark, we could locate where they were. So we found this burrow by going here in the night and then marking it with sticks, not on top of the burrow, but near the burrow. And um, then we went back during the day to see if we could find it, and after carefully looking and then peeling away some of the silk, as you see here, we were able to locate it. So you want to insert a stick or other um, kind of long, thin object to keep track of where the burrow is as you dig. This will help to make sure that you're digging in the right direction and digging along where the burrow is. And then the digging ensued. So basically we dug for about half an hour um, with the flashlights on and off trying to see where we were digging. Um, it took a while and it took a lot of effort. We were getting really discouraged during the middle. Um, but what motivated us is a lot of the amazing attributes of this spider. This spider can live to be decades old and we were wondering as we were digging whether some of them would be older than us. It would be pretty cool to find one. So that's what kept us going. So in terms of finding them, you usually want to look on a slanted slope without much leaf litter. Uh, they usually don't like to make their burrows around a bunch of leaf litter because it's easier for them to pick up substrate, um, like little pieces of soil and little rocks, to incorporate into the lid of their burrow instead of using leaf particles. I also just want to mention here that the images that you saw in the start of this video were staged, so that is not where we found the spider or where we are keeping our spider. Um, they usually don't live on rocks. They like to live in dirt or sand. Um, so don't house your spider on rocks and don't put it in direct sunlight for long periods of time because they live underground, as we said. Um, they only come out at night, so they are not used to sunlight at all. So a note about digging. You don't want to dig directly into the burrow because you may hurt the spider. So you want to dig below it on the slope, just like Kai is doing here. And the spider should come out of the dirt um, as it collapses. Eventually, it will take a while. This requires a lot of patience. On that note, after about half an hour of digging, we finally found it. It seemed to pop out of the dirt, just like we said it would. Um, it was really exciting. <laughs> uh, I never thought we would actually get to it, and then it was there. So after that, we collected it and brought it home. Then came the task of building the enclosure. So we made a sloped enclosure out of the kind of dirt near the habitat that we found it and started building a burrow using a pen or you can use some other object um, that's relatively long and thin, kind of like the stick you use to track the burrow. Um, and just kind of make sure that the burrow is wide enough, deep enough, not too wide though, you want to make the entrance kind of small. So then, you can see the burrow from the side, and we introduced our spider into its new enclosure. So we use the forceps instead of our hands because the spider is pretty aggressive and can produce a pretty painful bite. So you want to nudge it into the burrow, and <laughs> once after a little bit of struggle it goes down, it'll settle in and start to build the lid to its burrow. So then we poked air holes in the container like you normally would for any bug. Um, we tried to make sure they were wide enough and that there were enough of them to provide enough air and ventilation for the spider. Okay. 
And you can see here the array of air holes that we made. So one of the spiders we caught, we actually found as a female outside of her burrow um, right after it had rained, which is one way to get a spider if you're lucky. After settling those spiders into their homes, we went out to search again. So here we're about to flush out spiders, or at least try to. Um, this is a pretty humane way of catching spiders. Um, it doesn't drown the spider, it actually kind of forces them out to the entrance of their burrow if you use enough water. We did not in this case, we were not successful. So the burrows are quite deep and that's why it didn't really work. So after that didn't work, we tried using our final method, which was a grass stalk whose movements would imitate that of prey animals. Um, so we wanted to make light, small movements. Uh, we weren't making much progress at first, but then eventually we got some spiders to kind of come out of their burrows, not fully though. It was quite frustrating at first. It's important to note that the spiders you get when doing this are going to be larger ones uh, because they need to be bold enough to actually go out of their burrows um, and go after prey and risk being found by predators. And they also need to be hungry enough, so when you find a spider using this method, you're going to want to feed it relatively soon. So the reason that we wanted three spiders was because we wanted to breed them. Um, we'll let you know how this goes with updates later on. Overall, I'd say that either this method or the digging method was my favorite. It was quite entertaining, especially when spiders would mistake dirt and stones around their burrow for prey and kind of end up covering up their burrow by attempting to drag it back in. I thought that was pretty funny. So, spoiler alert, this is mostly fail videos of us attempting to get the spider. We did catch one eventually, but that's coming up. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy this wonderful montage. Eventually we got a little bit desperate and we um, tried to cover up the burrow after the spider went out with a rock so that it wouldn't um, go back in, but that backfired on us. Eventually, we got one. Kai tapped it so that it would tumble down the slope slightly, um, and after searching for a little bit, we were able to find it and contain it. So we use a small container here to transport it. It is not recommended that you keep it in here for very long. So this is our intro to the in the color catching video. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, so that was our first video. Uh, we're both new to this. We're a couple who's very interested in bugs. Um, please subscribe to our channel. Help us get off to a great start. Thank you so much for watching.